Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about transferring your image. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how are you gonna get your artwork across when you're starting airbrushing and you're, you've found a piece of artwork that you wanna do? And you're moving on now to getting your artwork across. If you're not that good at drawing and you can't draw it straight down and start airbrushing, there are other ways to get your image across. When I first started, I, I used an overhead projector, one of the old school ones that you've seen that when you was back at school and that's basically a square box box and it's got a light you put acetate on the top and you've got an arm over the top and you wind the arm up and down and it would project the image across so i've used that method and that that worked really well you tend to go through a lot of printer ink because you're printing down to like an acetate so you'll go through quite a few cartridges it can be quite an expensive way of going about it but it does work you can get this stuff called trace down paper where you would print your image out say on a4 a3 and then you could lay your trace down paper and put it on draw around the image that you've got it you want and then that trace down paper will put either a white lined piece of outline on your on your tank or whatever you're doing or you can get a carbon one or you can do the old school way if you've got a white panel that you're working on you've got your printed out piece of paper you can flip it over pencil on the back and then put that piece onto the white panel draw around and it will leave your pencil outline your carbon outline on the image you can do it that way the way i opt for now um, for me the easiest way is projectors i've got two projectors they're two dlp projectors we've got a small sharp one so you just plug that in like kettle lead and then you'll run your computer lead out say your laptop into that and then you can project up movie projector back to the board and you can scale your image up and the other one that i use is this is the main one i'll go to and the shops the back of but this is an Optima projector. This is really old, it's not a new one. You can get new ones which are HDMI, 1080p. But this one seems to work great. It's another DLP projector. I've probably had this about over 10 years now and it's been a cracking projector. It really has, really works well. You've got all your inputs on the back. So it's kettle lead again. I use that input there, which is the VGA SCAR input, and then into the laptop. And that seems to work really good. So they're the options you can use to get your image across. They're the, some of the ones that, that I've used, and they do work. So what I'm gonna to do today is I've got a job coming up, which is tomorrow, and it's a little bit of wall art in a child's bedroom. We've got to do the name on the wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the process on how I project it up. You'll see me project it up. I'm gonna be using transfer paper and that's used in the sign industry for transferring graphics across. So if you've got a piece of vinyl that's been cut out on a plotter cutter, you'd have your backing paper, which would be the silicon paper. Your vinyl would be cut on top of that. You'd weed it out, which would leave your text and then you'd get transfer paper and you put the transfer paper, squeegee that over the top. So when you lift it up, you can see the graphic underneath the transfer paper. When you come to fit it, you would mask it, tape it to the panel, half flip it out, cut the silicon paper off, and then you would squeegee it down with the transfer paper onto the vehicle or wherever you're putting the graphic and then you would pull the transfer paper off, that bit gets thrown away and your graphic gets left on the panel or the item that you're working with. So this transfer paper 
I'd recommend you getting some guys. If you're doing airbrush work, it's brilliant stuff because it's like a paper face. It's a low tack, so you can draw on it and then you can put it on a chopping mat and you can cut stencils out of it. And then when you use it on your panel, it's like a real low tack masking tape. So you can put your pieces on, pull bits off, spray through it. It's nice and easy to cut with a scalpel. So you'll see that in today's video anyway, guys. So I'll wrap this bit of talking up. We'll move on. I'll get set up. I'll get the projector set up and the piece of artwork that I'm going to do. Get it on this easel here and we'll start and you'll see me drawing out and getting this piece of artwork ready for tomorrow. So I'll see you in the next step. Right guys, we're all set up. I've got the laptop set up, the projector set up. I've put it at that sort of distance to the easel. We've got a piece of the transfer paper on the easel there. That's the transfer paper that I was on about. You can get it in different size rolls. You can get it 600, 300, you can get it 1200 if you want it. Um, so that's what we're gonna be working on. Simple pencil and we'll be projecting. It's basically a font. So it's like a bubble font. So I'm gonna project it up. It's basically alphabeted out on the actual image. So I'll, I'm gonna do all the letters that I need to the scale size I want, bring that piece of transfer paper over, drop another piece over the top, and then I'll make the stencil up, move it along, and I'll join the letters up where I need them together. And we'll just do a tracing through that one on top of another, on top of another piece, and I'll make the image up, the name, and what we need. So I'll stick you on a time lapse. Uh, it might flicker a bit because we've got to turn the lights off in the studio because you need a dark room when you're projecting up, so you can see what you're drawing around. And you'll just see me buzzing around with a pencil, tracing out this font and then we'll flip the lights back on and then I'll do another shot of me showing you how you'll chop it all out and make this stencil up. So I'll see you in the next step guys. little time lapse you see me project up and I basically you see me move the screen around and I've picked out all the letters that I need now what I'll do is I'll just put this onto a chop mat and I'll draw around this again and sharpen it all up and then I'll get a piece of transfer paper and then drop a line on the pan transfer paper and I'll move this piece of paper over and then duplicate trace and make the name up that I need and then that will be the finished stencil. I can put another piece of transfer paper on the top of that. So when I cut through, I've got two lots of the stencil or even cut straight through again onto this one right at the bottom. And I've got three stencils made up with like one cutting round, so you've got spare. So if you're on the job and you're working and one of the stencils mucks up, you know you've got a backup with a couple of pieces just laid over the top, draw over the top one because you'll see through it and then just cut round and you've got some spare stencils. So that's how I'll do it if I'm doing text and things like that, or if I've got an image where I need to have a real sharp edge, I'll transfer the, blow the image up first, draw around the image, none of the detail in the middle, and then I'll put the transfer paper onto the piece that I'm working on so that leaves it a nice mask, so I've got no overspray going onto the piece. Project back up, then you can pencil in the details, the little pinpoint bits that you need to work from, and you know you've got that real sharp masked outline. There's some of these on my previous videos, I'll show you that, so if you watch them, you'll see how I use the transfer paper in other jobs. So we'll move on now to the next step. I'll get this across to the cut mat, and then I'll just put you in the time lapse and you'll see me working this image out, sizing it up, moving it about and we'll get the finished stencil. See you in a bit.
guys, in that little time lapse, we projected up and I put all the letters that I wanted on there, pencil round them, then I moved that over to the table and I just went round them with a 0.7 mil. It is a rotary graphic 0.7 pen and went round over that so it darkened it and blacked it up. Then I moved the transfer paper over and just put a line and a line and then just went over, picked the letters out that I needed and spelt the text that I wanted. So that would be the, you've got your first stencil there. So you could now cut that out and use that, put it against the wall spray. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put two layers of transfer paper, paper down onto the chop mat, put this on top so it's three layers, because you can stack this on top of each other, which is really good. And then I'll make three layers, I'll make three stencils when I chop through. So I've got two spare. So if you have any muck up to any of the letters, or you're missing some of the little, where the drop shadow bits are, you've got spare pieces. Once I've cut all this out, I've got big rolls of the silicon paper. So I'll make some little silicon paper envelopes slide the transfer paper in because that won't stick to the silicon paper and you can just transfer your artwork around with you it's in a nice sealed envelope so when you get on the job you can just slide the transfer paper out stick it to the wall you've got your backup stencils if you need them and that's how i go about doing it guys so the next stage i won't put you through it but it will be three layers of this you'll just stick this like that on top and then you put another layer on top you would chop that out and you'll get three stencils so that's how i would transfer text across if i needed a real sharp outline if it was going on a wall or on a car there are faster ways of doing this you could go to a sign shop send them over the font you wanted and they would cut it out on a cutter plotter but then you're paying for that process of going to a sign shop or if you've got your own plotter you've got the expense of forking out for a plotter cutter which are the cheapest ones that are half decent looking about four to five hundred pound for one of those then you've got your vinyl so i find that is a cheap quick process that's took all in that probably took about 30 minutes to get all that projected across, done. Cut this out, will take me 10 minutes, done. And I'm ready to go. So that's how I'll do it. It's probably a slow way in your eyes, guys, but it works for me. It's worked since day dot. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I hope you can see me in tomorrow's video, come across with me, where we'll be spraying this on the wall. I'll set the camera up in the customer's house and we'll spray this and you'll see me get this image across do the highlights the shading i'll be using the portable compressor for another run out i'll take the ps 270 i'm going to take the griots 290 the ps 290 and i'll take the iwata hp bcs bottom feed an array of paints so yeah hope you can join me in tomorrow's video see you in the next one